For this, we will be using Euler's method. So we have here a ordinary differential equation with an initial value at uh, y at 0 is equal to 5. And then we are required to find the value of y at 3. And we will have we have this differential equation dy dx plus 0.4y equals 3e negative 6. First, let's a uh, let's assume a step a uh, step size of 3. Okay, that means from 0x we will jump into an x value at 3. So which is exactly at the location where uh, y is uh, required to, to find. So remember dy dx is equal to f of x and y. It's a function of x and y. And our dy dx is simply uh, obtained by transposing this one to the right so that what's left will be dy dx so we have here 3e raised to negative x minus 0.4y now the general equation of Euler's method is this if you notice this is simply a uh, a form of a line a slope of a line y equals mx plus d right Okay, so again, this is sort of a slope of a line, y equals mx plus b, a slope-intercept form, wherein m is simply the slope, right? And as, as per discussed here, the dy dx is our function of x and y. Okay, so this uh, this corresponds to our slope, and this h is our step size, which is the distance x, and this is our b here. Okay, so for the initial condition, i is equal to zero. So plug in simply simply plug in our values. Since i equals 0, i plus 1 is y1, and yi is y0 or y0 plus uh, the value of the function at xi, which is 0, x0, yi, which is 0, so y0, multiplied by the step size or the increment, which is h. So we have this equation, and we have already know the value of x0, which is 0. The y naught or initial condition of y is 5 and the step size 3 or the distance. So plug in that 5 plus f or the value of the function at 0 and 5 multiplied by the, the h which is 3. So that means we are required to find the value of the function dy dx at, at coordinates 0 and 5. So plug in 0 here and 5 here. 3e raised to negative 0 minus 0 0.4 times 5. Then by the h, multiply by the h, 3. So do the operation. We have y1 is equal to 5 plus, uh, this is 1, right? This is simply 1. Minus 0 0.4 times 5 is 2 times 3. Or 3 minus 2 is 1 times 3 is 3. So 5 plus 3 is 8. So what we what we were able to find is the value of y at 3. Or y1 is equal to 8. Okay. But however, the exact value of this of this problem is 
2.763. So you will notice that uh, our estimate of y at x equals 3 is way too high compared to the exact value. So again, with the, with the concept of numerical methods, let's try to refine our h. So let's, let's ha have a, an h smaller than 3. Okay, so this time, let's assume an h equals to 1.5. That means we will be doing the Euler's method at a 1.5 increment. So we find the value of y at 1.5 and next we find the value of y at 3. Okay, so i equals 0 again. y1 is y0 plus f x0 comma y0 times h and plug in again these values. It's, uh, as you notice, it's very, it's the same with what we did earlier. However, the step size now is only 1.5. Unlike earlier, it's 3. Okay. So plug in the values, then we get 6.5 as y sub 1. That means uh, y not here is 5. Then uh y1 which is 1.5 he got 6.5 okay then we're still not finished so let's now proceed with finding the y at distance 3 okay so that is y sub 2 so y sub 2 is equal to y sub 1 plus f x sub 1 y sub 1 times h Therefore, we need to insert the values we got earlier. So, at x1 now is 1.5 because we're at this stage now. We're now trying to, to project or to, to find the value of y at the distance 3 by the values we obtained from our earlier uh, condition y1 y, x sub 1 is equal to 1.5 y sub 1 is 6.5 as we obtained earlier okay and again h is 1.5 so y sub 1 plus f x sub 1 y sub 1 times h so plug in y sub 1 6.5 plus find the value of the function dy dx at 1.5 and 6.5 coordinates and then multiplied by the h 1.5 so plug in 1.5 and 6.5 so the value of the function is negative 1.93061 okay. or the value of dy dx and multiplied by 1.5 then add 6.5 i obtain 3.604 so that's our y sub 2. And as you notice now, by just assuming an h is equal to 1.5, half of uh, the interval earlier, we are now near to the exact value, 2.763. So that means if we further refine our h, obtain a... Uh, a finer h, say h is equal to 1, we might be able to get a, a more accurate value of y sub 2. Or sorry, of, of y at, at coordinate x equals 3. So this is a very good, for me, an example of Euler's method because uh, if you were able to watch uh, the movie we call that hidden figures okay uh, this talks about uh, black uh, black Americans female black Americans hired by NASA you know, they were able to uh, the protagonists there were able to predict the projection of of uh, of a of a rocket okay 
she was able to predict the location of this rocket uh, upon arrival to the Earth by using only Euler's method, I believe. Okay, so you should watch that. Okay, so that's a problem for initial value problem. Ordinary differential equation. So that means uh, by using Euler's method, given the initial condition, we can predict or project the value of of the of the of the unknown value at a certain uh, distance. Okay. okay, let's proceed with boundary value problem. So using finite difference method. So earlier, it's an initial value problem. We were only given an initial value. For a boundary value problem, uh, there's a given value on both uh, on a, on a two locations. So from that, that values, so we are uh, from the word boundary. There, there are values on the boundaries. So perfect example of that is a... Uh, the one here, uh, a beam subjected to tension and a uniform load. The general equation of that is this. So d2y over dx squared minus ty over ei equals qx times l minus x over 2ei. So t means the tension. qr is the uniform load. Of course, l is the length of the beam. And EI is a well-known parameters, elastic modulus, and inertia, or second moment of area. Okay, so this is the general equation. So what's given here is, of course, the value of Y, or the displacement at these two locations. So, so that's why it's a boundary value problem. Uh, it's, it's already known, the displacement of of the beam at these two locations at that at that boundary okay so using finite difference method we will solve this problem for example we, we are required to find the displacement of course this beam will tend to displace like this okay so what if we are required to find the displacement at that location okay so using finite difference method we will solve that uh, first, uh, let's introduce the finite difference method. So, for example, we have you know, a general equation like this and with a boundary value given. You simply plug in uh, the, the formula of, of, uh, of d2u over, over dx squared and du dx as we have known before so this one is a forward uh, forward uh, difference formula while this one is a central difference formula for second derivative while this one is a forward difference formula for first derivative since the the equation has a given uh, second derivative and first derivative so we we will plug in our equation on that okay and operate and find the uh, and find the uh, unknowns so in this case in this problem here so uh, the constants are given already the value of the tension the Q the uniform load the length the inertia and the elastic modulus and we can now find the displacement or the y so assuming that we divide the beam by 3 such that your increment or your delta x becomes 75 over 3 it's now 25 inch okay now you notice that uh, it's a second order differential equation so d2y over dx squared so let's plug in this value the central difference formula we already know here okay and there's no uh, 
uh, first derivative so this is just what we need so so I plug in all the values here and that one you will get this equation okay so this is already known this is already known already known already known so we are only left with uh, with the variables y and x as unknowns okay I think yeah okay so plugging in that equation so yi plus 1 minus 2yi plus yi minus 1 over delta x squared minus 2 times 10 to the negative 6. So as you not notice, your y becomes yi. And 75, this, this is now 75. Times 10 to the negative 6, x becomes x of i. And then 75 minus x becomes 75 minus x of i. I know this already. G uh, given value is already y1. There's zero displacement because our beam is clamped on both ends. And of course, y sub 4 is also known is equal to zero. Now, uh, let's proceed with i equals 2. Since so we're in this location, your y at, at i equals 2 your yi plus 1 is this, right? y sub 3. And your yi is y2, of course. And your yi minus 1 is y1. Okay? So y sub 2, y sub 2. And then your x sub 2 is 25 already. Okay, for i sub 3, i equals 3. Your yi plus 1 now is 4, y sub 4. Okay, yi is y3, yi minus 1 is y2, okay, y3, and 50. Your x sub i now at 3 is 50. Okay, so as you notice, there will be four equations for unknowns. Your y1 is already known, y sub 4 is already known, and what's only left, unknown is y sub 2 and y sub 3 so if you if you transform this into a matrix this whole equation we will get this okay and what kind of matrix is this oh sorry so you notice you have diagonals here Okay, and you have zeros on the upper and lower, above the upper and lower diagonal. That means this is a tri-diagonal matrix. And I've already uh, uh, made a video how to solve a tri-diagonal matrix using Thomas algorithm. So you can now imagine uh, a boundary value problem wherein you have many nodes okay so the, the more nodes you have your matrix size will also increase and the the matrix will be tridiagonal always for this kind of problem so you see so you see the similarity so for a structure for a, say a building matrix a stiffness matrix of a building you have a tridiagonal a building a stiffness uh, the stiffness matrix of a building is is also a boundary value problem okay but in this case we can uh, we will just solve this using finite difference method okay okay so four equations for unknowns except that y1 is already known and y sub 4 and by operating this matrix, you can now get the unknown y sub 2 and y sub 3. That means the displacement or the deflection at y sub 2, wherein x is uh, 25, 
that is negative 0 0.5852 while at y sub 3 is equal to 50 your y sub 3 is negative 0 0.5852 yeah it uh, makes sense because uh, our beam is symmetric however the exact value is 0 0.5365 so at least uh, the value is uh, more or less the same with the exact value Therefore, if we assume, again, a more finer uh, increment or steps, we might uh, get this, the same value, very near this value. Okay, so that's it for initial value problem and boundary value problem.